Hey everyone, here's part two of the Christmas book. And this is where I'm going to hem and haw around. So if you don't like hemming and hawing, you might want to move on. Alrighty, so I'm going to take these out of my... Let me show you how I store this stuff first. Everybody likes to see that. This is one of those small woven baskets you can buy at Target. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them sometimes in Joann's. You can sometimes get them at Hobby Lobby. Michael's I'm not sure of. Okay, so this is what I've stored it all in. These are the bits and pieces I showed y'all last time. This has got miscellaneous stuff in here. And then I just stacked all the tall stuff up because this basket is not huge. But I put them all in here so I have all my project stuff. Even my washi tape is way down in there. Um, so I put all that stuff in one spot so I can keep an eye on it. And then when the month of December is over, this stuff will go back in the Ikea drawer that is designated for Christmas things. And then it will sit there idle for a year. And then next year we'll start this process all over again. Oh, joy. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take these big ones out. And I'm going to flip through these and try to decide. Now, this book is rather smallish. So I think, um, you know, I'm going to have to cut stuff to go in it and glue it onto cardstock. I think it's more or less the way I've decided to do it. And I probably will only do two signatures. So there's that. So I will show you each individual page and decide which one I like better. Eh, I'm ambivalent about that one. I do like the houses in this one, but the rest of it I don't care about. And there's nothing on the back. So yay me. This one um, it's just basically a piece of paper with a lot of miscellaneous stuff glued on it. I don't really care for this one. It's kind of a hot mess. This one, though, is fantastic. And this one goes in the good pile. So we have the ambivalent pile on one side and the good pile here. This is also... A good one. I don't know how I'm going to be able to fit it in, but it's definitely going to go. The same for these that are the folded paper quilted looking ornaments. You cannot. Come on. You can't get rid of this. Even if I only manage to get one in the book, I'm still thrilled. Nothing on the back. Okay, I don't need the handkerchief. This is just a miss. Oh, there's a house. Oh, let me put that in the good pile. All right. I am not an overly religious person. I don't usually put this kind of stuff in my books or that so that will go in the miscellaneous pile this is nothing this used to have something on it I do like this for maybe background and maybe some of this although with that stuck on there and the word this would be a little hard to do it across um, so this one goes in the miscellaneous pile not crazy about that not crazy about this, although that would make a nice page. And then I would glue something really big to cover most of it up. Uh, no. All right, this one looks like some stuff was ripped off of here already. Nothing on the back. This is the whole page, and it has pop-ups. I do like these swirlies. I imagine they were stickers. The inside, I do love the Santa Clauses. I might could salvage this one. This one, if I try to pull this stuff off, I'm a. Can I pull it off? Yep, it's going to rip up the page. So I don't know what I'm going to do about this one, but I still like it. So I'm going to put it in the good pile. Eh. Oh, but definitely keep this one because I definitely want that Christmas tree. This, I don't really, no, nope. this one either. This is kind of cool, but I don't think that it's going to fit in the book no matter how much I like it. I don't know if I can whittle it down. This is a pear with a uh, holly on it or something. I don't know. Uh, no. This one is cool. But I think it's too tall for the book. See that? If I put it in there and give it a little extra space, this is hanging out the back. I 
do like it though. All right, let me put it over there as a maybe. This, um, no. This, um, this could be used for a background right through here. Okay, so that's got possibilities. This, I like this Merry Christmas with the Santa Claus metal hanging off of it. I might take this portion off. Yeah, okay, so we'll put that aside. This is cute. I don't remember seeing this one. Maybe I didn't go through these thoroughly enough. All right, so this is, this is kind of cute. I wonder if I could just get the house off of there. Yep, that's got possibilities. All right, so let me put this back here. No, and no. Oh, no. No. That's nothing. Oof. No. Um, I do like this little stick-on tea thing with a little embellishment on it. That has possibilities, so I will set that aside. This, no, and this, no. And I didn't realize that she had cut a place in this to make um, a, a little place for the bell. I thought this was very clever, but I don't, I can't put it in my book because I just don't have the room. All right, so we've weeded that into a lot, uh, down a lot. There's the, the pile that has possibilities. Here is the pile that I am the least interested in that I may pick and choose bits and pieces out of this. I'm not going to totally get rid of these, but they have possibilities, just I can't see them right now, you know? Maybe later I will use them to... Um, fill in other spots in the book. So there's that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, oh yeah, and these two right here, I still like these. I just can't use them in this book because they're the wrong direction. See, if it went like this, I could fit that on the whole cover, but it's not wide enough it will hang off the cover if I take this off and glue it on the cover and use it. So I can't use it for this book, but it's almost completely cut in half to where if I did a Coptic book, I think I could use this for the front and back cover. So these are going to be saved. I may not use them right now. I doubt I will, but I'm going to save them. And then there's all kinds of little piddly cards and stuff like that that um, I put in the Christmas stuff and I will take a look at them as I go to see if I can work them in. All right, so the first part is going to be measuring, yes, I know the evil thing called a ruler. Uh, let's see, so each side would be about four inches. Yeah, about four inches, so I think what I will do is do each page around three and three quarters. So that gives me room for creep. Y'all know what creep is, right? When you stack pages and top of pages, the more you stack in, the further the things stick out on the end. All right, so um, I think three and three quarters. I don't know. I might cut them all at four inches and see how it does, and then I always can make them smaller. Better to cut too large than too small. All right, so let me go cut some cardstock and get started. Okay, so I picked out this Dove Gray cardstock that I've had for umpteen years that I never use and I wanna use up, so I figured this is the way to do it. Um, so I've cut, oh, I still have two more. One more, one more sheet. Yeah, I have one more to cut up, but nevertheless, these are cut. There's just your basic cut. Uh, here's another sheet that's, you know, they're just card type things. There's three of those. And then I did, because I miscut my, um, I got the dimensions wrong, so I thought what I would do is, instead of wasting 
some of the cardstock, I would take and do a fold and either do it this way or this way when I sew it into the signature. So it'll open up out like this. And then that'll give me room for more stuff. I did two of those like that. So I'll have one face in one direction, one face in the other. And I may just stack them in. So I have this one, do this, do another one. Let's see, do, I might turn this one this way and then do this here. So that might be part of the signatures. All right, so as you can see, my measuring was not consistent and it does have a little bit of creep, but I'm okay with that. And um, well, I might just trim off the top here so it doesn't look so unsightly. Um, this is because of the fold. Let me see, where did I put my, there it is. So if I put it in there like that, it's going to stick out just a little bit on the end, but I really don't want it to stick out up on top unless it's a tab, or I may put tabs here to distract from the fact that my cutting was crappy. <laughs> you know, when you're a book person and you make all kinds of stuff, you find ways to compensate. All right, so I'm going to trim this off with my utility knife when I find it. Did you guys know these things broke off? I used one of these for the longest time and I was like, I don't understand. This is like, it's really dull and I don't like this thing. And then <laughs> somebody told me, well, you goofball, you know, these things break off, right? I'm like, no, this is when I just got started crafting. So you just take a utility knife and you push this in just a tad and you just snap off the end of the blade and then this goes in the garbage. And be sure you keep this away from trash cans that animals get into because that is basically a razor, one-sided razor blade. So I, um, you know, they get dull real quick when you cut a lot of paper or cardstock, that kind of stuff. Chipboard especially is tough on these little skinny knives. And so I'm just gonna, oh man, cuts like butter when it's a new blade. Oh yeah, lovely. All right, so let's see how we're doing here. Oh, outstanding, outstanding. All right, this is going to be a little wonky here, but let's see, the ones that cause it to do that are the ones that are the folds. Well, I can cut, okay, so I can cut. Nope, it's not the ones that are folds. It's these. Okay, so that's one. Let me make the correction now before I hate myself later. I can cut the ends off these just a hair. So that. Usually it's about an eighth of an inch discrepancy, which is what we're going to do here. Ta da! We didn't mess up any of our folds. We just shaved it off. Let's see how we got it here. Yay. All right, so that worked. And then, you know, all the others, if they're not exactly even with this, I could care less. Because before it's over, there's going to be all kinds of weird stuff hanging out the ends, I think. I might have to put, put tabs on some of these guys. I like the tabs. I ordered myself um, a die set that's just tabs. And I'm crazy about that silly set. Can you believe that? The silliest things get me excited. Okay. I don't think that's going to... Did it go all the way through? No. Try to cut too much at once. These little cheapy cutters just don't... Cut it! <laughs> they don't always do as good a job as you would like. Plus, I think my blade's going dull. All right, so let's try this. Let's see what kind of concoction we got here. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty. Okay. Voila. I don't like my edges hanging out, especially. Okay, so this will be... 
There's this tip out. We'll do it this way. Where are the others? This one here. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this is because I want to make sure everything fits. So that gives me three pages. So I think this one will have to turn the other direction so it tips out the other way. Nope, that's a regular one. This is a regular one. All right, so I did the two tip outs back to back. So let's turn this one this way. We have this one, this one. We'll put a regular here because we have the tip out this way. Put that there. Then we will do regular here and then we'll do this one here so that we open it. No, we will not do that that way. We will do it this way so that when we open it, it will tip out this way. So we have a tip out that goes this way and the rest are just straight. All right, and then we have one that goes this way. So we have a little variety. And so when you change that, it changes your creep. So I cut them according to how I had them folded in before. And now I can't remember how I had them in there. Fooey. <laughs> and I think maybe because they're short enough, it's really not gonna matter. Because I shaved a lot off of them. All right, let's do it this way. Let's put it back in here and see. And next time I will try to remember to, re yeah, it's not gonna matter. Okay, so I'm gonna clip these together so I remember what order they're in. Now I've seen some people take thread and they sew these together so that when they work on the, on the signature that what's on one side of the paper kind of matches nicely, harmoniously with the other side I'm not sure I feel that way about everyone I do. Probably not. But, you know, it couldn't hurt. So I'm going to clip these together. I, I really like working on them individually because that way I have room to spread them out and glue and trim and do all that. Once you sew these things together, it's a little hard to make sure your measurements are right on target. So that's two schools of thought. You can sew them together temporarily in this signature bundle so that you keep them in the order in which you want them. Or you could work on them willy-nilly random and just kind of hope they fit together well at the end so that you have more control over size. It's up to you, whatever you prefer. I've done it both ways. It makes me no difference. I'm not one of those people who has to make one side of the paper match the other. Except for this kind of page. I might have to make what's here look cohesive. Instead of doing a little piece here and a little piece there, it would be the whole piece here, but it could still fold. It just depends. Depends on what I'm working with and how much of a hurry I am. So I have one, two, three, four, five signatures. So I think each one will have five signatures, maybe six, because I have an extra sheet here. I might cut this as the sixth signature and then put six and six, because I'm only doing two signatures. So I should, and it's a, um, Second signature is done and together. I didn't do a, um, I only did one little tip in type thing. I think what I might do is put some kind of a decorative thing on either ends or I can tape something onto it to extend it out more because I have, you know, leftover paper. 
um, which may be coming to an Etsy shop near you. You never know. All right, so there's the second signature. And they both fit in the book. I cut them down to make sure they were about the same size. Yes, there's a little hangover, but honestly, I could care less. So there's that. All right, so here's the first one. So now I have to decide what I want to do with all these lovely things here. Some of this stuff might be too big for what my pages are. Some of them might be too, yeah, this one's very tall. I might could cut some of the bottom off of this one. Because up here is the very tip of where the paper is. All right, since there's nothing on the back of this, let me just peel this off. I don't need the tree. It's a cute house. And she's got little, you know, the little pop-ups. Pop dots or whatever they are called now. I don't know what everybody calls them now. Oh, and the tree. Oh, I see this. Okay. All right, so... Let's see how she's got the tree in there. I don't want that on there. And I don't think I want all of this on there. So I'm going to peel these off. Because, like I said, my book already gets alligator mouth as enough as it is. And I don't need to add to it. So I'm going to peel these off. They're a little old. They're starting to yellow. I think I saw a date on this book said 2015, so it's about, what, six years old? Some of them have come off a little easier than others. All right, so I'm going to have to find a background for this little house. And I don't want to cut off this portion, so I think I might just take a blade and a little ruler and cut the bottom off of it because I want to save this. I don't care about this little black strip here at the bottom. Oh, oh, there's a Christmas tree there, but it won't matter. Let's see if I can get it straight. I don't know. We'll see. All right, now i got to find my blade. Here it is. If I cut the bottom off, I think... There we go. That... It will not stick up on the top of this signature. Hey, there you go. Look at that. Whew, that was close. All right, I may take this rhinestone off of here. I could probably get this pretty, pretty flat. But I need a, I need a, some kind of a Christmas background for this. So this is where the second pile comes from, comes in. Is I'm going to look at these papers to see what I might be able to cannibalize to use for a background. No, not a train. <laughs> not an angel. No, no doves. That's plain. No. No. Oh, no. think so. Well, there wouldn't be very much of it in the background, would there? It'd be a very small amount of background on there because the pages are not that big. Right, that's a possibility. I don't know. I'm hearing you guys going, oh god, no. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Mm-mm. Uh, no. I do like the trees. I might have to cut him out. Yeah, I think maybe he's going to get his own page. Let's just cut this in half, put this in half. I think he needs his own page. Is he tall, too tall? Nope, if I cut just to sh shave him a little close to the bottom here, 
with the trees in the background, he might get his own little page. Yep, okay, so there's that. Let's put him on there. There's that. This one's not going to work. This one's definitely not going to work. No. Okay, so as you can see, I got it on there. I'm a little bit off, just a hair here, but after I sew it in the book, it probably won't make much of a difference visually. So there's the house glued down. Had to use a little bit of score tape at the bottom. But I salvaged a nice chunk of this, and I got a nice chunk of this to use later on something else. I don't particularly care for the back, so I have this for something else. This may be, These may turn into pockets. They may turn into yet another page background sort of thing because I need to cover up this little thing where I peeled it off. But overall, I think these will be very useful in the future. So, there's my first page. Yay! All right, so, where's the rest of my stuff? You know, there's so much stuff here on the desk. I'm like looking under things to see if I'm missing something. All right, so here it is. So it'll go on here. This will be the first page you see when you open up the book. Is this the right stack? I don't even know. <laughs> There's so much stuff piled up on my desk. I couldn't tell you if I was coming or going. I know I have another signature somewhere around here. I think it had a black clip on it. All right, so see, you can already see the creep. It doesn't take long for that to happen, does it? All right, so I guess my other signature has flown the coop. I really seriously oh here it is bull all right so there's that um, I did peel this off the uh, this strip right here and it had pop-up dots on the back 
and you can see where they used to be. And she sewed, which I think is lovely. And then she put a little sequin on there. So I want to save this um, for another page. I might put this for a just a little flip out. I don't know. We'll see. Do I have any that are... Yeah, that is too small for that. I thought I might have one. No, well, just a little bit. I could. Uh... No, nope. all right, we'll save it for later. Okay, so that's in the pile to use later. And I still have the snowman that I'd like to put in here somewhere. I'm just doing this willy-nilly. There's not going to be any rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. So, just so you don't panic. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so, let's get that straight from the get-go. Um, let me put this in here. Creep is not bad enough that I'm worried about the edges here. Now, I do like using tabs. So, if I'm going to put a tab on the first one, what I need to do is go ahead and start cutting out tabs and gluing them on pages so that when I glue something else, I'm gluing over so you cannot see. Some people like them where they go over both sides, but I think it would look a little weird over here, put a tab like right there. So what I will do is I will go ahead when the camera shut off and I might take some of this paper here that I used and cut tabs out of this so the tab for this page will match there. It won't match the other side, but hmm. Oh, these are pages. She's taken a book and she glued the pages together to give them strength. And that's why everything is so thick. It's because there's glue there's pages that are glued onto things. I like the little snowman sticker, so he might be useful somewhere else. So we'll save him. See, I'm trying to salvage as much out of here as I can. I hate tearing up somebody else's work, so I want to save as much of it as I possibly can. And I'm going to tear these apart and make this thinner, and I'll probably do the same thing to this one off camera so that they're not so bulky. That's something I learned from another YouTuber. All right, so I want to do the snowman, but he might have to be further back. Maybe he could be like the last page. Let's see. Where's that clip? Oh my lord. I can't believe I gotta look for it. <laughs> ooh, 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 got lucky. Here it is. I might have to make it red so I can find it. Alright, so let's do this right side up. He's a shade too tall for this page. And he will take up, I can feel how bulky he is. He will take up a huge amount of space on this page. Alright, so. You know, I have that page that opens up into like a magazine style. I don't think there's enough on here to make him two pages. No. Okay. There was a thought. All right, so I might have to make him small and put him on here. I like him with all the little trees. I might have to shave off some of the bottom of him so I get the trees in here, but I really like him with the trees. All right, so let's go this way like this and find an, a pencil and trace this. Of course, it's not gonna be cut perfect, but at least it will get as close to the design as possible. And then I will use my pencil over the white here because I wanna cut the bottom of him off so I can get him in here. And this is where it ends, right here where the tree is. All right, let me go cut this.